In this video, we are going to see five common mistakes that ASP.NET Core developers do. The first one has to do with the order of the middlewares. First, let's see a bug and then how to fix it. Here we have a React application that is using ASP.NET Core as a backend. If I click F5 to refresh, you are going to see that it works. But if I click F5 one more time to refresh again, we are going to see that it doesn't work. Why is this? And if I press F12 to open the developer tools, we are going to see that we have been blocked by course policy. But why is that? It was working just a few seconds ago. The problem is the order of the middlewares. Let's see that. Let's see that in here, in Visual Studio, we have that I am using output cache because I want to use caching to make my application faster. But by mistake, I put output cache before the use course middleware, which means that when the response of the endpoint is not in cache, then we are going to bypass this and then we are going to go through this middleware and then we are going to go to the controller. That is why at the first refresh, we didn't have an error, but in the second request, when we refresh the second time, the response was already in cache. So we wanted to respond from here, but this happened before the use course middleware had the time to actually validate the request and therefore this is why the error has occurred. The solution is simply to have use course before use output cache. With this, we're good to go. We're going to see that now we can come back here, F5. You are going to see that I can press F5 as many times as I want and there is no problems here. So this is the most common mistake, the order of the middlewares. The second mistake is, speaking of caching, not use caching when it is convenient. For example, let's go to this John Rust controller that we have here and notice that we're returning this data that is simply getting all of the genres from a database. It doesn't matter that this is data that may change in the future. This is basically a static data because it doesn't change as often and therefore it is convenient to use output cache. The error would be here not using a caching mechanism. In my case, I like to use output cache. So the solution here is to understand when it is convenient to use cache when the data is basically static, it doesn't mean that it cannot change any time, but it is a data that a lot of people want to consume and by using caching, you are avoiding having to do round trips to the database just to retrieve the same data over and over again. In the next error, we are going to talk about performance, but before that, if you want to learn more about how to build ASP.NET Core applications using best practices, buy my Udemy courses today. I have a course on minimal APIs with Entity Framework Core and also minimal APIs with Dapper in which we use store procedures. Also I have a course with Angular and ASP.NET Core and more. Link with a discount to these courses in the description of this video. Alright, so back to the tutorial. So as I was saying, the third error has to do with as no tracking with Entity Framework Core. The idea is the following. Let's come here. Let's see that I have this code here that uses Entity Framework Core to retrieve data from a database. But as we're seeing here, we're not using as no tracking. The thing is that when we use Entity Framework Core, we retrieve records from a database and then we can manipulate those records here in C-sharp code and then use a function to actually update those records in the database. That is great, but that has a performance hit and therefore if we only want to get records from the table and then give those records to the user, we don't need that tracking functionality and therefore in order to make our application more performant, we can say as no tracking so that we don't get that penalty of using tracking. Of course, I'm not saying that tracking is wrong. I'm saying that if you don't need it, don't use it and make your application faster by using as no tracking. The fourth error has to do with the life cycle of services. For example, let's come here to this genres repository class. Let's see that in here, I am injecting the application DB context. That is the DB context from Entity Framework Core. By default, this DB context is a scope, which means that we cannot inject it into a singleton service. Let's see what would happen if we configure this iGenres repository service as a singleton. Let's come to the program class to configure this. Let's come here. We can do it here. Let's say builder services 
at Singleton, hay genres repository, genre repository. Let's see that our application won't even start. Control F5. Let's see that here we have an error. We should have this message, which means that our application cannot even load. So let's see here that the error says that we cannot inject the scope service application DB contest into the singleton a genre repository. Now, the problem is that somebody may see this mistake and try to bypass it. And we can bypass it, but it is not correct because you can cause memory leaks. So what we have to do instead of bypassing it is to actually fix it. So instead of using a singleton here, use a, a scope. And in this way, if we press Control F5, you are going to see that now our application loads. So the idea here is that you have to be careful when mixing different services with different life cycles. You cannot inject a scope service into a singleton service, just as an example. And finally, the final common error that we have is leaking secrets. For example, let's come here to the app settings JSON and let's pretend that we have this key here that is a super secret key that is from a service like OpenAI or whatever. Now, it is dangerous to put this here because if I upload this code to GitHub, then somebody else will have access to this key and therefore they can use the AI services and they will consume my balance. So we cannot use this configuration provider, Absence JSON, to store secrets. It would be better to use, for example, an environment variable or a simple secrets JSON file. Let's see that. Let's come here, right click on the project, manage user secrets, and it is a simple JSON file, just like the Abstinence JSON, but this one is not going to be stored in the repository and therefore I can safely put secrets here and never ever I will leak any secrets that are here. So what do you think? Have you made any of these errors? Can you think of other errors? Let us speak in the comments. Thank you.